Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 184th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Now before I get into the news in this episode, I just wanted to take this time to thank you all for being such loyal and amazing subscribers. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably already know this, but yesterday YouTube sent me a silver play button for surpassing 100,000 subscribers, which was a while ago, but YouTube just recently started issuing these commemorative rewards for 100,000 subscribers. So again, thank you so much. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I'll get to the point of 1 million subscribers and receive the gold play button. Now it's certainly going to be a challenge, but it's one I'm willing to tackle head on with your support. I also wanted to take this time to say that I'm expanding my channel into the general tech scene and I'll start posting more videos outside of the realm of jailbreaking and Apple. I'll be covering topics like Android computers, possibly video games and various tech companies like Google and Tesla, as well as really anything in the world of technology that I think would be interesting and appealing to you, my audience. And with that said, if there's a specific topic you'd like me to create a video or multiple videos on, just be sure to let me know in the comments. Now first up in the news, let's discuss iOS 7.0. Point one, the current jailbreak for Apple's latest firmware, and the status of the Evader's next untethered jailbreak. So to preface, I discuss most details regarding the jailbreak status in a video that I posted ensuing iOS 7.1's release. However, if you happen to miss it, you can find a link to it below. So essentially, when Apple released iOS 7.1 to the public, they effectively closed a number of vulnerabilities in iOS 7 that Evasion 7 exploited to achieve an untethered jailbreak on iOS 7 through 7.0.6, rendering the utility useless on iOS 7.1 and future versions of iOS 7. So while it's no longer possible to jailbreak all devices untethered on Apple's latest public firmware, the iPhone 4 can still be jailbroken by way of a tethered utility, Geek Snow. And naturally I made a video that I'll have linked to below. And now to answer some questions surrounding the iPhone 4 7.1 jailbreak that I'll inevitably receive. Now first it only supports the iPhone 4 and nothing else, as it utilizes GeoHot's old 2010 LimeRain exploit, which was patched by Apple with the release of newer devices. And the only reason it still functions on the iPhone 4 is because it takes advantage of a hardware-based vulnerability that's impossible to patch by Apple without releasing entirely new devices. Furthermore, due to the nature of the jailbreak and the fact that it doesn't make use of new exploits, it's tethered, meaning that iPhone 4s that are jailbroken using Geek Snow must reboot with the assistance of the utility by plugging into a computer and entering DFU mode, all of which is detailed in my in-depth tutorial. Now as for the future of jailbreaking, there won't be a another untethered utility until after Apple releases both iOS 8 and their next round of iDevices, seeing as the evaders aren't interested in burning through exploits to jailbreak a firmware like 7.1, because it simply isn't justified. If the team is going to make use of extremely valuable exploits that can easily be patched by Apple with the release of a new firmware, they want to ensure that the tool lasts and can support new devices like the iPhone 6 and upcoming iPad models. Now moving on, in last week's episode where I discussed Bloomberg's troubling allegations of electric car manufacturer Tesla, the company's CEO has yet to, as of recording this video on Friday, March 21st, respond with his environmental impact blog that he reportedly began writing last weekend. So stay tuned for updates. And if you're not familiar with the situation, just be sure to watch last week's episode of this series. And now I wanted to mention that I'll begin work on my long-awaited Tesla Model S review video, as my car has finally been fixed after debris hit the hood on the freeway. So if you're interested in learning more about Tesla's all-electric premium sedan with its 17-inch touchscreen and impressive 3.9 seconds 0 to 60 time. Follow me on Twitter for updates. And now I wanted to talk about Android Wear. So on Tuesday, March 18th, Google posted a video that showcased what the company has planned for future products. A version of Android that's optimized for smaller devices that are intended to be worn, primarily watches. And now in the past, companies who have created wearables and were interested in using Android as the OS were forced to modify it themselves. Now, in an attempt to dominate the wearables market, Google will perform all of the necessary modifications on their end to ready Android for use with more compact devices that feature smaller screens, again like watches. And following this announcement, a few companies revealed the wearables they're currently working on. And in the case of Motorola, who seemed to have the biggest impact, the company announced their upcoming Moto 360, which you've probably already heard at this point is round. Now every smartwatch up until this point, including the Pebble Steel, which I'm currently wearing and use on a daily basis, have featured square form factors, and while I'm all for innovation, I 
honestly don't think creating a round watch is as big of an engineering feat as Motorola is making it out to be. And personally, I prefer the look of the Pebble Steel over the Moto 360. And although the Pebble Steel is square in shape, it appears as though it flows better. Another interesting point is that watches that are built upon Android Wear will have LCD displays, which consume a crazy amount of power in comparison to the e-ink display found in both of the Pebble watches. So it will certainly be interesting to see how companies plan on tackling this glaring obstacle. And if you're interested in learning more about the current company on the top of the wearables market, check out my in-depth review video of the Pebble Steel, which can be found below. And now for some video game news. Earlier this week, Sony announced their far-up virtual headset for the PlayStation 4 codenamed Morpheus. And although the headset, which is in early development stages, certainly looks cool, albeit nerdy, for those who aren't into tech, haven't we seen this already? Yeah, that's right, the Oculus Rift has been grabbing headlines for some time now and will provide essentially the same effect as what Sony is aiming to capture with Project Morpheus. And as on-scene reporters from IGN, who have now both tested the Oculus Rift and Sony's Project Morpheus, have informed viewers the two are very comparable as far as performance and visual effects. Both headsets will report feature 1080 displays which come out to 1960 by 1080 images for each eye. Morpheus however will reportedly be more ergonomic and feature better tracking because it will utilize the PlayStation's 4 camera which of course is sold separately and should again enhance motion tracking. And with no concrete launch time in place gamers will have to settle for roaming the streets of Seattle as Delson Rowe in Infamous Second Son, a new game that launched yesterday the old-fashioned way. Staring at whichever TV the PlayStation 4 is connected to or through the PS Vita with the PS4 Connect app. And that actually transitions perfectly into a new and highly anticipated PS4 exclusive, the third installment to the Infamous series. I was able to download the game on Thursday night and play it for a brief period of time, and let me say that it's certainly a next-gen game. It looks amazing and it easily outranks almost all console games in the graphics department. And although I've only had a limited period of time with Infamous, it's undeniably fun to traverse Seattle with incredible superpowers and take down the dreaded and suppressive antagonists of the game, the DUP, in new and exciting ways. And overall, if I had to rate the game, I'd give it a solid 9 out of 10 so far. The plot is engaging the new facial capture technology it utilizes is outstanding, and plus, who secretly doesn't want to have superpowers? Now, I have been contemplating the topic of doing gaming videos for quite some time now on my channel, so I'm curious to see what you guys have to say about the topic. Just be sure to let me know in the comments section. And finally, to wrap up this week's episode, I wanted to briefly mention Free App Life. We recently relaunched the service with a new native iOS app, and I really wanted to thank everyone who's downloaded it so far, and to remind you that Free App Life is still in beta stages, and we're working every every day to improve the service and correct various issues that propagate. Free App Life will certainly improve drastically over time, and I wanted to thank you so much for your continued support. All right, and that concludes everything I wanted to discuss in this week's episode. If you liked it and you want a chance to enter to win a $100 Amazon gift card, just be sure to rate it up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Just be sure to do so soon, though, as the giveaway will be concluding. Now, if you don't know what to leave in the comment section, try answering the question of the day, which, like with last week's episode, I did allude to towards the beginning of this video. Let me know what type of videos you want to see from both myself and my channel in the future. So again, just be sure to let me know down below in the comments or on Jailbreak Tech Info. And if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos and cover Jailbreak topics, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me over your circles inside of Google+, and follow me on Instagram at ICUID. Again, I'll have links to everything down below. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.